Hello friends, welcome back to the channel, welcome back to the gas station. This is Monday, May 1st, my birthday month, <laughs> of course I'm at the end of the month, but May 29th is my birthday, Memorial Day, I'll turn 66. So, what's on the agenda? Hope everybody had a wonderful weekend. Got rained out Friday. It was cold yesterday. <laughs> it's, I'm telling you folks, that was a short summer we had. Because it is cold. They're talking a chance of snow flurries in the morning. So I'm so glad I have not done anything with the garden yet. Still working on it. Uh, you know, the last two weekends I was able to get up there. Last weekend it wasn't ready to till again. This weekend it was all, everything was too wet. But I did get started on the floor joist. <coughs> Excuse me. For the house. So it started. I ran through what two baits I had. So I went to the post office. I got a you know, I've got two more uh, gift cards for Lowe's. That'll pay for another load of, uh, or, or, you know, pay for half of uh, another load of two by eights. The plan is to do next weekend, you know, take the load out there. Because I'm going to buy 30 of the two by eights and 50 of the uh, two by fours, 92 and. Uh, Five eighths two by fours for my wall studs. So I'm going to take all those out next weekend and uh, build three more sections of the uh, floor joists. At least, you know, shoot for it. And I've been going back and forth. I'm building this thing 16 by 40. I was sitting down there laying out rooms, you know, the, uh, just one bedroom, one bathroom, a pantry, a utility room, you know, that's all I need. Kitchen and living room would be one big room, you know, but I was trying to figure out where to place windows and what size windows I'm going to get, you know, so I can start building the wall panels so that I'm done with the floor and... I'm really torn. I'm still doing the prices of maybe instead of 16 by 40, doing 16 by 48. That would be, you know, two more sets of floor joists. But I would need more beams. I would need more blocks. I'd need more subfloor. <laughs> I'd need more two befores. I'd need more trusses, <laughs> you know, more siding. So, uh, uh, you know, I'm trying to keep my expense below $10,000. And I think that would throw me over the $10,000 mark. And like I said, it's just me and Gail. Space is not an issue because I have that giant barn back behind where the house is going to be built. I have the cabin. So I'm not worried. About, you know, I'm not even going to do an attic in that. You know, no loft or anything in the house. It's going to be a flat roof at each foot. Because I don't need any storage up there. So, I don't know. But I was looking at that, man. An extra eight feet, it does make a hell of a difference. Uh, eight times 16, let's see, it's 128 square feet I would be adding to a 640 square foot house. But I'll save that money for the putting a deck on the front, something like that. You know, the money it would cost to do that would pay for my doors and... Uh, Maybe some of the windows. So we're going to, I just talked to y'all and figured out I'm going to keep it at 16 by 40 and be happy. <laughs> Let's see what else is happening there, folks. Not a whole lot. Um, got another balloon. Oh, imagine that. They found it August or April 28th. They've been tracking it. They don't know who owns it. They don't know if it's, you know, <laughs> an enemy or an adversary. It's at like 36,000 feet. They don't know if anybody's controlling it. You know what? They know everything about it. I don't care what you say. They already know. 
So, but it's like between Hawaii and Mexico, somewhere in there. It'll be interesting to see if this time they shoot it down. It's out over the Pacific. It's not over land. So they can't use that excuse if they want to shoot it down. Uh, but it didn't... Evidently, when it crossed over in Hawaii, it didn't uh, float over any, you know, important infrastructure or military stuff. How big is Hawaii? You know, 36,000 feet in the air. It went over the entire thing. Don't give me that shit. Man. They just think we're so stupid. But we'll see what they want to do with that thing, you know. Do you see where James Comer said that uh, Hunter Biden's lawyers are intimidating witnesses and whistleblowers? <laughs> you can't make this shit up, folks. Witness intimidation. God, just right out in the open. You know, I don't know all the details to it. I don't even want to know the details to it. But it's just so crazy. That you can't, you know, I mean, I don't put it past them, but I can't believe it. So, did you see, the UK is trying to hire somebody, if you're looking for a job, to study birds on one of the most remote islands in the world. You know, low pay, long hours, but they're looking for somebody who will spend 13 months out there on this island. It's uninhabited. I mean, it's seven people call it home. They have a couple other people that work there, you know, watching these birds. But they need someone else, I guess. They uh, get supplies once a year. So they live off of frozen, you know, everything. They got a freezer full of frozen vegetables and a freezer full of meat and cans of frozen stuff. So... They, there's a two week period where supplies are loaded and people are changed out but uh, yeah spend 13 months on that island uh, like I said uh, little pay long hours but interestingly enough the island has internet access <laughs> so you do have that going for you you can keep in contact with the world if you go out there. What a job. I know some people would love that job. Absolutely would love it. I don't think they're going to have any problem filling that job. I know a few people I would like to send over there for that job. <laughs> Get away from them for 13 months. Wow, talk about living off the grid. Holy cow. Got to say, rest in peace to Tim Bachman. Of uh, Bachman Turner Overdrive. He died. 71. But I always liked Bachman Turner Overdrive. Yeah. I mean, they're all that old. You see where uh, Aerosmith, they, they announced their final tour this year. Um, <laughs> Steven Tyler's facing all kinds of sexual allegations. You know, uh, sex assault charges. I don't know. Everybody's going after them. I mean, you're talking about a rock group that started in the 70s, been 70s, 80s, 90s, you know, 2000, 2010s, and even now. Tell me there was not at least one occasion where someone could claim a sexual lawsuit. Jesus. You know? Oh, man. But he's got health problems, I guess, coming up too, so. No more uh, Aerosmith. All right, I'm back. Had a rush of people come through. Holy cow. Um, I'm going to catch up where I was. You know, that's hard for me. Uh, something I wanted to mention. Uh, two or three weeks ago on one of these chats, I mentioned, you know, artificial intelligence and some of the dangers in that. Maybe we should start preparing for things like that. Well, and 
people blew me off, said I didn't know what I was talking about. AI was nothing, blah, blah, blah. Jeffrey Hinton, who worked, at, he was an executive at Google for, I don't know, a decade or two. Uh, he's, he's thought of by many as the godfather of artificial intelligence and the development of like OpenGPT, you know, those kind of platforms. His, his software is the basis for that. Well, he quit his job at Google. He resigned. And now he's warning people of the dangers of further AI development. That's how bad it is. And he says it, it's hard to conceive of a way to keep the bad actors from doing bad things with this technology. Even Stephen Hawking in 2014 said that artificial intelligence could mean the end of the human race. He said it would take off on its own and redesign itself uh, at an ever-increasing rate. Right? Humans are slowed by biological evolution. Artificial intelligence can far outpace humankind as far as development and further development of itself. Humans just couldn't compete against it if it's allowed to continue. AI systems with human competitive intelligence poses a real risk to society and humanity we really you guys need really need to look at this and study ai and see what it is i'm talking about you know that's the cataclysmic event that people should be preparing for i mean he said the world needed to learn how to prepare for and avoid the potential risks of further ai development you know, you got to believe Stephen Hawking. You know, it's no, you know, it's been written off for so long. It's science fiction. That's just science fiction. It ain't science fiction, folks. You know, you got uh, Elon Musk even signing on to that letter. We need to pause our research on AI and figure a few things out before we continue. But it's business. People aren't going to stop. You know, but. Look into AI, look into artificial intelligence and where it's headed and what it's already doing. It's going to replace us, period. It will eliminate us, I do believe that. And it won't take it long. Also, did you see down in Houston? <laughs> I lived in Houston for a while, I love Houston, I love Texas. But the FBI warned the people of Houston, Southeast Houston uh, of a week-long nuclear incident training exercise that a whole bunch of different departments are participating in in a big area of Houston. You know, uh, civilians aren't supposed to be at risk with this, but all kinds of activity. Now, the bad thing about that... <laughs> I'm not necessarily a conspiracy theorist, but you think about how many mass shootings occur, especially in schools, within a couple of week period of a drill being held in that city or even that school. You know? You gotta wonder about that. If a nuclear incident occurs in Houston in a few weeks, look out. <laughs> I'm telling you. It, you know, sometimes you have to question it. You know, once or twice could be coincidental. But when it's happening all the time, it's no longer coincidental. So this could be very scary for the Houston, Texas area. Trust me. Hmm. Uh, what else is happening, folks? That's 
that's about all I can think about right now. I just wanted to do a video for you, do a little chat with you. Give you some things to think about, some things to talk about. Comment. Ask me questions that I don't know the answers to, but I'll make them up. <laughs> Everybody else seems to do it. Um, yeah. I mean, Congress actually worked together. You see, they pass a bill. They kind of hide this stuff. It doesn't make the major, major news. But they can't give themselves a raise. You know, that's not going to work. If they said Congress gave themselves a raise, people would go ballistic. But what they passed was, and uh, they all agreed to it, Republicans and Democrats. So this proves they can work together if they want, right? Now they can expense up to $34,000 a year for their food and housing and all that kind of stuff while in Washington. So they basically gave themselves a $34,000 a year raise without calling it a raise. Now it's a, a reimbursement program. <laughs> yep, we're the dumb ones. We don't, we don't see what's going on, folks. Jesus. Man. But anyway, it's going to be getting late here pretty soon. I got to bundle up to bring my stuff inside. It's cold out there, folks. A cold rain. I hate it. I want some warmer temperatures. But, uh, yeah, we, uh, you know, like I said, had a good weekend. Any weekend out at St. Bernard Acre. Alex came home today to pick up Bentley. He's heading out tomorrow with Bentley on his truck. And let me tell you something about that. This warmed my heart. This just was a great thing to see. You know, ben, we got Bentley and Rex. Well, Bentley decided he was Alex's puppy. He picked Alex. Now, I'm not going to argue with that. I wanted Bentley, but Bentley picked Alex. So, Bentley goes with Alex. And he took him out on the truck for about a week and a half. And then had to drop him off at home a couple weeks ago because his air conditioner, remember we had summer there for a little while, and his air conditioner quit in the truck. He had to get to Springfield, get that repaired, and then get a load back up this way so he could pick Bentley back up. Well, he came in today. Now I'm telling you what, he walked in that front door, and that dog, was so excited and was so happy to see Alex. It was amazing. I mean, 10 minutes of jumping and crying and yelping and just going berserk on him. And it just felt so good to see that, you know? I'm like, wow. So definitely, we sent the right dog out on the truck with Alex. Because man, that was just a wonderful thing to see. And I know Bentley is ready to go back out with Alex. You know, uh, Alex will be heading out in the morning. He didn't, he's not like taking home time. He just needed, he could do his 36 hours here, uh, restart and take Bentley back out with him. So I'll be down to just Rex then, which is not, I don't care. Bentley is a bundle of energy. Rex is a much more mellow, relaxed dog. And when you got Bentley there with him, they drive me up a wall. They drive Gail up a wall. Bentley is a troublemaker. He gets into all kinds of trouble, you know, and gets Rex yelled at all the time. <laughs> so I know Rex is ready for a break too. But you got to love him, you know. But, uh, yeah, I'm going to get off of here, get this thing edited and uploaded for you guys. Appreciate everybody watching. Appreciate the uh, likes and subscribers. Got so many new subscribers jumping on board, and that is just totally awesome. Oh, I did a live stream Saturday night. Another great one. That is growing. That is getting to be more and more fun. I'm so glad I started doing those out there. Because it really, it, it's really getting to be good. And uh, 
I made the announcement. I am running for president. I'm throwing my hat into the presidential circus. I'm going to run as an independent. The reason I'm going to run for president, I saw Ron DeSantis hasn't even announced he's running. He's got an exploratory committee out there. I mean, he's going to, but he's not going to announce it until after Florida Congress session or something. I don't know. He's already raised $110 million in donations for his campaign. And he hasn't even announced he's running yet. So, if he could get $110 million, I need $10,000 for my house, for my shed out there at St. Bernard Acres. I'm running for president until I hit my goal on the fundraising. And then I'll say, okay, I'm not going to run. Nah, that just, that just blows me away. But anyway, everybody have a good... Oh, let me tell you something else, too. This was funny. My address is Cumberland, Ohio. My post office box is at the post office in Cumberland, Ohio. I drive to the cabin. It's about a four-mile drive to the post office in Cumberland. So I was at the post office Saturday. They're open like three hours on Saturday. I went by to check the P.O. box. And I mentioned to the, the I guess he's the postmaster, <laughs> the only guy in Cumberland. But I told him I would like to start getting packages delivered to my address there instead of here in Wheeling. And he said, no problem. I said, well, the thing is, I don't want, I'm not here all the time. So I don't want the postal carrier to leave them out at my mailbox or up on my porch because the stuff won't stay there. I prefer you held them here and then I'll pick them up when I come out to the cabin. He said, well, your mail's not delivered from here. It's delivered from the Pleasant City Post Office. I'm like, seriously, every time I come out, every time I go out to St. Bernard Acres, I pass by the Pleasant City Post Office. I mean, that's where I should have got my P.O. box, because I don't even have to drive further to get in. I pass it on the way to the cabin. But he said, what you do, you go over there, go in there, and you talk to Beth. They don't like to hold the packages, because the carriers get paid extra to deliver packages. If I'm having them hold them, then they're not getting paid for that. I mean, I have a P.O. box, and with that, I get a lock box about, I don't know, yay big, you know, that things can go in. But it's like I got another 14-inch chainsaw a company sent to me to do a review on. That wouldn't fit in one of those boxes. So he said what you do is you write your address, 8552 Cupic Road, number sign, box 63. Not P.O. Box 63. And not on another line. Make it, that is part of your address. And with that number sign and Box 63, that will alert the post office in Pleasant City that that is for me and for Cumberland. Because it's going to have the Cumberland address on it. But it will alert them that I have a P.O. Box there in Cumberland. They will deliver it to the post office there in Columbus. That way, or in Cumberland, that way they get their delivery fee, I guess. And he will hold it there for me until I come in on Friday and Saturday and pick up whatever may have been delivered. What a goofy way to do shit, you know? <laughs> but I worked in direct mail for 35 years. I know how the post office works. I understand it entirely. Anyway... That's it, folks. Uh, if you want to send me any packages, it's still going to be in Wheeling. I'm not going to try that yet. I'll try it with a couple of small things and see what how that works out. Uh, you know, I'll order some stuff off of Amazon. Because, you know, a lot of places won't deliver to a P.O. box. Right? And the post offices there, those rural post offices, if they get some, a big box to a P.O. box, they send it back. 
right? So I put my address on there and my box number, and it doesn't look like it's going to a P.O. box. But the postal clerks in those little rural areas know what that means, I guess. I thought that was interesting. Okay, now I'm getting off of here. Damn it. You keep making me think of new things. You keep asking me questions. I got a customer pulling up anyway. I probably got to go out in the cold and put air in their tire. This is Joe here at the gas station. I'm out, folks.